What is up everyone? It's good to be back making Destiny 2 content again, finally, with the Into the Light update that came out on April 9th, a couple days ago. It's a really good update so far. I really like it. Now that I've put in about 12 hours of playtime into it, which by the way, all of that has been live on YouTube and Twitch, so you should totally check out my live streams. If you want to, you're invited. But yeah, I just wanted to come out with a video that goes over all the new stuff that came out with Into the Light and maybe show you why it's actually a great time to either start playing or make Make your way back to Destiny 2. The final shape is just around the corner, thankfully tons of exciting stuff there also by the way, but this Into the Light update provides some great ways to help you get prepared for the final shape. So let's start off with the first big new activity to the game, Onslaught. It's a wave based PvE mode that has you fighting different enemy races with a boss every 10 waves that you'll have to teleport into a pyramid ship to fight. There are defensive upgrades that you can get, very similar to Gears of War's horde mode with the upgradable laser fences, turrets, decoys, all that stuff. And you can earn scrap mostly just by playing and killing enemies. And all scrap that's earned is shared between you and your fire team, but everyone has their own stash that they'll need to purchase upgrades. In Onslaught, it's not just a stay alive mode, although that is part of it. You'll have to mainly defend the ADU, which is this giant mechanism here with the health bar. If your whole team or the ADU dies, you are actually sent back to orbit, but thankfully killing champions and some other major level enemies will drop these ADU batteries that you can throw toward the ADU to heal it up a bit. Keeping the ADU's health topped off is obviously a huge priority, so make sure you're always paying attention to it. The twist with Onslaught though is that after every boss wave, the ADU has a chance to move to another part of the map, so you can't really plan on hunkering down in one location. You'll have to build up each one individually. That's why managing your scrap is super important. You don't want to get to wave 41 or something and have to defend a brand new area with no scrap remaining. That's not a good position to be in. You will also be able to complete occasional side objectives. Some are optional, some are mandatory, but I believe that completing both of these will get you a heavy ammo crate. Let me know if I'm wrong there, but Onslaught has two difficulty modes, normal and legend. Normal isn't too bad, and you can actually just match make in the waves one through 10 mode over here, or you can choose the one through 50 mode. You can pick your own map and of course choose legend difficulty. On legend, again, it's much harder. The enemies will be a lot higher level than you are. Waves 40 through 50, for example, on Legend, you're actually capped 25 power levels below the enemies, which is the same as Grandmaster difficulty. So you will need solid builds here, solid team communication if you want to finish it. Of course, Legend mode will give you more rewards if you can complete it. You'll get double chests to drop after each boss wave that you complete. The general strategy now for optimal farming is to run Legend waves 1 through 10 or 1 through 20, and you'll get tons of loot that way. And speaking of loot, we've got quite a bit of new stuff to hunt down. The new Brave weapons are really sick and you'll want to grab these during Into the Light. They will be available after Into the Light once Final Shape releases, but there are special limited variants of these weapons that will only be available until June 4th when Final Shape releases. These limited editions look way more cool, but more importantly they roll with double traits in each column, making it that much easier to get the god roll that you want. What's also cool is that once the final shape drops, you'll be able to enhance each trait, but only on the limited edition ones. These limited editions are just random drops, they're very rare, and you'll have to complete each weapon's quest in order to start finding them. You can find these quests in the Hall of Champions at the R-Site 9940 NPC right by Shax. Completing these quests will allow you to attune these different weapons here at the Hall of Champions. Attuning a weapon will increase that weapon's drop chance and the limited edition drop chance while running Onslaught by about 50% according to Bungie. So if I want more Recluse SMGs, for example, I've got to complete the Recluse quest then attune to the recluse, and I can only attune to one weapon at a time. So once I get my god roll recluse, crossing my fingers, hopefully it happens soon, I can then attune to a different weapon to try to grind for that god roll and pick up that limited edition. I hope that all makes sense. Bungie reprised some of the most iconic weapons in Destiny 2 history here, and also gave them some banger trade options, so they are just back in full gear. So all the more reason to grind out Onslaught to get them. And speaking of the Hall of Champions, this is a whole new social space that got added to the game. Kind of like a 30th anniversary bundle, you can use your tokens of honor to unlock different chests, which will get you armor and weapons, all that sort of thing. There's a full armor set for every class, really cool. Also making return is the Super Black Shader from Destiny 1. 
this is something that the Destiny community has wanted forever, just a pure black shader. We've gotten really close with a couple like the Erebos Glance, but it hasn't quite been that all black look. You can see how sick this looks, and this is going to be a multi-week quest that we have. We're going to have to do a lot of stuff to get it, but I would highly recommend just getting all this stuff done now because Super Black is apparently going away after Into the Light, and you don't want to be that person that doesn't have this shader because everyone's going to have it. Bungie also made things even easier for new and returning guardians to get going and caught up in Destiny 2. Right in the Hall of Champions, you can get the gift of the Thunder Gods chest to get you a full set of 1810 power gear or max power items, which will save you weeks of power level grinding, literally. You'll also get an exotic armor piece for your class, as well as the Thunderlord, which as we all know is an overall top tier exotic weapon. You'll also have the ability to skip the New Light campaign altogether if you want, which is nice, that'll save you a few hours, that way you can get right into the action. Another cool thing is that you can head to Ikora in the tower to get what's called a New Light kit, where you can fully unlock any light subclass of your choice, and get an exotic armor piece specific to that subclass, which again will save you a lot of grind time and kind of giving you a good recommended path for getting your character started. You can also change the appearance of your character anytime you want for the first time in Destiny history, and you'll also get another name change. So if for some reason you don't like your Lord Salad Fingers Banana Man 69 Bungie ID anymore, you can change it, thankfully. Into the Light brings back the iconic exotic mission, which allows you to get a crafted version of the exotic heavy sniper rifle, Whisper of the Worm. The mission is mostly the same, but there are some secrets that have been added and updates made. I've got a video walkthrough on all the stuff currently available here, by the way, so make sure to check that out. And just like other things in Destiny, more secrets and more unlocks for Whisper will be getting released over the coming weeks, so there will be great reason to replay this mission a bunch, which is good because it's fun and you can play it with your friends. But there are also other things to look forward to as well with the Into the Light update, which again is free. We've got Zero Hour, the Outbreak Perfected mission, also returning at the end of this month, which we can expect to bring us some more secrets to uncover as we craft the Outbreak Perfected. Yes, I know, this is old content, it's not brand new, but the Destiny community has been specifically asking for these two missions to return ever since they got Sunset back when Beyond Light released. So if people are mad about this, it's like, how can you make anyone happy? So overall, in my opinion, it's a good thing in my book that these were brought back. We also have the Pantheon coming, which Bungie hasn't told us too much about yet, but there have been some data mine leaks and stuff. I'm not going to cover that right now, but we will be able to play this at the end of April. What we know so far is that this is a raid boss gauntlet where we can get crafted raid weapon patterns and even adept raid weapons in here. We also know that these will be existing raid encounters, not new, but they're going to have some twists apparently. This sounds to me kind of like they're keeping the theming of Onslaught going, just that wave-based, get more intense, more difficult type of content. It looks like we will be able to tackle a maximum of eight raid bosses with everyone getting more and more difficult. Contest mode at the very end, they said, which is 20 levels under power and extremely punishing. If you've never tried a contest mode raid, it is insanely difficult. Really fun though, so I'm excited for this. Guys, for a free update, this is a ton of content. Destiny 2 has been in a severe dry spell for a few months now. You could argue the entire year, we've had our ups and downs, so this is the juice that we needed to hopefully make a comeback and get us some good momentum as we make the push to the final shape, which again, by the way, that looks like it's gonna be insanely cool from what we've seen so far. Prismatic subclass, exotic class items, what? Anyway, I hope this was a good representation of what you can do in Into the Light. If you really need people to play with, you know what to do. Just join the Discord and meet up with some really cool people. Well, that is it for this one. Again, please check out the live streams when you see me on. Come say hi. They're a ton of fun. I'd love to meet you. But yeah, I will see you there or the Discord or the next video.